minute. All right, that's up to you guys. I can I can hold up my end of the bargain. Brian, at 0-2, hosting a team that's 0-2, what's the challenge of trying to not play desperate, but to do what you need to be doing to do, to, to win games? Yeah, have to play with an urgency. Have to first of all prepare with an urgency. You know, starting today, and I think we've got a good jump on it today, but it's coming with an intention and a focus. And being able to execute, that's what it comes down to, is, is uh, just doing our job, making the plays that, that we're supposed to make, and um, you know, coming out with a purpose, like I said, and, and being able to play consistently through four quarters, not just one drive, not just half, but play for four quarters. What do you do to, to help rebuild guys' confidence, young guys, particularly when they get down? And how do you do it maybe after you've had a, a poor game you, yourself? Yeah, you just, you know, you're, you're talking through, um, Supporting guys the best way you can, um, you know, encouraging in, in the best way you can. You know, we have a lot of guys who, who have a lot of belief in, and, and this team has a lot of belief in, and uh, we're going to need everybody to, uh, to go get this win uh, on Sunday. So uh, just being able to, to speak confidently to each other, build each other up, and, and getting ready to go, that way we can go play our best ball on Sunday. How do you feel Traylon is evolving as a guy like, to be a, a go-to person for you? Traylon's done some really nice things. You know, he's made some plays for us. And um, we're gonna have to continue to, to press into him to, to make more plays. You know, he's got talent. Uh, he's shown uh, what he can do. So now uh, we expect him to go out there and, and uh, play to that level each and every play. From your perspective, what is it that makes it, you know, so likely, so easy to hit him on those passes across the middle? Is there a certain skill set that he has that you know stands out to you that makes you like to hit him in, in those situations? Well, he's doing what we're asking him to do, uh, and that's all you can ask for is. is for him to go play fast and, and do what we ask him to do. You know, he's big, he's strong, he's physical, he has great hands, good body control, and uh, he's, he's jumped in with, with both feet and, and doing exactly what we ask him to do. So uh, that's all we can ask for at this point. And uh, like I said, look forward to continue to press him to make more plays. When you have a lopsided result like Monday night, do you go back and scour the film and look a little deeper than you normally would when, as you try to make the corrections, or do you just prepare the same each week? No, you have to go go look at, at what caused it, right? You can't um, take a a broad stroke, you know. I think uh, you try to look at each each play and, and what went well, what went, what didn't go well, what we can fix. And uh, at the end of the day, it just comes down to it's a plain clean football, not hurting ourselves with with dumb mistakes or penalties, and being able to sustain drives. And um, I think if we do that, we'll be in good shape. Talking about sustained drives, what, what do you think the, have been the biggest problems on third down, and how critical is it to? to maybe get that fixed? Yeah, we heard ourselves putting in, ourselves in longer down and distance situations uh, this past week, you know, with some penalties, some negative plays uh, that really backed us up, you know, kind of killed some drives with that. So being able to stay in, in third manageable situations, and then when we do get those opportunities, we got to convert. It seems that you do. Been uncharacteristic, but is that kind of the easiest thing to clean up when you're going through the list of corrections for the week? Yeah, no doubt. When you look at it, it's. Uh, Thing, or shooting ourselves in the foot with, with the penalties, you know? Um, and they're coming from all over. It's not just one person, one group. So we just have to play smarter, cleaner football and uh, eliminate the, the mistakes that, um, that we shouldn't be making, you know? Simple things that, uh, that we know well. We just have to execute that, our bread and butter stuff, be able to play clean football, execute it, and give ourselves the best chance to, to play efficiently. You guys have been really efficient in the opening drive, which Mike said earlier has been mostly scripted of those two games where you scored on touchdowns. Is there something when it becomes unscripted later in the game that you guys have to do a better job of I mean, you know, within the offense to sustain that success? Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's game plan plays, right? So it's, it's plays that uh, you've practiced all week just like the rest of the game plan, you know, and it's just some plays we like. So we, we, we call them early, um, but it really just comes down to execution. You know, being able to, to execute the play that's called that comes in uh, and do our job, nothing more, nothing less. It seemed you weren't ready to come out of the game the other night, but is there some noticeable physical benefit to having played one fewer quarter on, on a short week like this? Yeah, it's all, I mean, you never want to come out of the game, but uh, you know, body feels great. I think our guys feel really good. Um, on the whole, you know, obviously some guys are dealing with some things, but on the whole, our guys feel really good and, and excited to go out and get the ball rolling in the right direction this How about week. You specifically, I mean, do you do you can you tell a difference that hey, I only played X number of plays as opposed to a full game the other night? Uh, I feel great. You know, I I don't know about number of plays and all that, but you know, I didn't take any any hits that caused injury, and so I think when you come out of a game without injury, it gives you a lot of momentum to to go into the next week feeling good. Tradition 
seems like empty sets around the league are loaded with you know the most dangerous weapons a team has. You guys were, were running one out that had three of the five weren't those kind of guys. Is that a, a wrinkle for, for you guys to do something the spring? Mike said Traylon was, was open on, on one of those. Is, is that kind of an unconventional approach? Yeah, he was open. Um, you know, I think we, we tried to mix and match what we're doing with our personnel. So that one was a, a bigger grouping. Um, you know, got the defense we wanted, uh, just didn't didn't execute. So, um, you know, you, you try to try to mix it up where, where teams don't know exactly what you're doing when you call a certain personnel. You know, if we call big personnel and we pack it in there and run it every time, they're going to know what's coming. So, call the big personnel, spread them out, got what we were looking for, just have to execute. What do you, what do you like about Todd Downing, uh, working with Coach Downing and also as a play caller? He's great to work with. You know, he. Um, he doesn't have an ego about about what we're doing. He, he's willing to to work with myself and the other coaches and and making adjustments into to what we feel like collectively is a uh, is a great plan. You know, he obviously uh, does a good job of of getting everything started, and, and it's just minor adjustments from there. So um, he sets the tone, you know, on, on a daily basis on what we expect from our offense, and you know, I do my best job to uphold that. From a physical stand, uh, how has that synergy between he and Tim Kelly? How is that going? It's been good. You know, it's been great to have Tim in the building, just another veteran mind uh, who knows a lot of football, um, not only the game planning, planning process, but during games as well. So I think he's been a, a big help for us so far. From a physical standpoint, in terms of a short week, probably not the best, but mentally to be able to move on is probably a little bit easier to kind of put that in the past. Yeah, I'm excited to, to go get back on the field and play another game. Um, you have an, an outing like that. You want to get past it as, as quickly as you can and and um, go get things going in the right direction. Did you see enough of Chandler Jones last year? You, you like to keep him at arm's length this year? I like to keep all the, the big guys up front at, at arm's length. You know, um, Obviously talented edge players that they have between um, you know, Chandler and, and Max on the other side. Um, guys who play fast, they're long, they're active, they play hard, and uh, they're disruptive. So definitely have to uh, be aware of those guys and have a plan for them. The last time there was this much external doubt about where the team stood was when you took over as the starter. What makes you believe that this group can have a rebound and the success that you had a few years ago in the same spot? Yeah, it was a lot of belief within our locker room. And I think that's where it all starts is, is we know what we're capable of. We haven't put that on the field so far. Um, but we have the guys we need and the belief that we need to, to go out and do it. Just a matter of doing it. You know, you can't talk about it. You can't think about it uh, anymore. It's a matter of going out and, um, and making it come to life on Sunday. Hi, Teresa. What'd you do for your birthday? Work. It was a Tuesday, and I got work until 8.30 last you night. You didn't go to any dinner? Big weekend. <clears throat> Friday night. Where are you going? Uh, I haven't chosen yet, but probably Sperry's. No free shot. Get the pork chop. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find a nice steak place for sure. 1237. 1237. Exactly. Okay. Get uh, them off. I'll try to keep it clean again today, or <laughs> unlike yesterday. Uh, Mike, in, with the short week, <clears throat> trying to make corrections and trying to, you know, uh, tighten things up. Uh, with the script wise, how do you, what do you focus on first? Is it making the corrections? Is it just focusing on the, 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 the things you want to key in on and, and your bread and butter, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to be selective. You have to try to get these guys uh, back in here, get their bodies back. And I think we've done that. I think we've lifted and we'll condition and, you know, get stretched out, um, get a little bit of light work in today. Um, meetings have been great. And I think you have to be able to show them. You know, continually the stuff that we're doing well, not lose sight of that. <clears throat> um, make sure that we get these, you know, things that, that have to get fixed, uh, corrected, and, and especially the ones that are going to carry over to this football game, which will, which will be a lot of them. You are a very confident player. You're a confident coach. Is it ever difficult for you to deal with guys who are having a little bit of a crisis of confidence, and, and how do you work through that? Well, I think we work through it together. You know, like we want to do everything. Uh, we want to try to just be better together. We want to embrace coming into work. We want to embrace coming to meetings. We want to focus on today. Uh, you know, we got to go play. You know, you have to go play. You have to, you have to try to have a goal and, and try to figure out what you want and then try to get out of the way. Sometimes we get in our own way too much. Is there an individual element to it, though, Mike? If, if, a, if a corner's having a particularly hard time, 
uh, and it's given up big plays. Getting through it together is one thing, but but maybe. Well, you have to go out and, <clears throat> you know, you have to do some of those things on your own. I mean, this is, is certainly a great team sport. And, you know, what we think is one of you know, the best team sport. It just requires, um, you know, you're, all, you're always just trying to, you know, when things are happening good or things are going bad, we just make sure that we're always checking in on everybody. Um, you know, and then I think personally, you, you work through some of those things, uh, saying, you know, trying to trying to work on whether it's studying or understanding or situationally, um, you know, per your position. Well, Ken, while there was a lot of hope and promise, you know, with him coming into the season, it hasn't exactly started well. When you have a guy like that that's so talented, how do you handle getting him back on, on track and fulfilling that potential that he has? Well, you just work. You know, you continue to show up every day. You work. You, you meet. Um, and that, that's the only way I know how. There's no, um, there's no magic formula. It, it's about working and it's about, you know, communicating, you know, what, what you see and, and, and what, the, what each player sees. Is there something technique-wise that he could get better? We can always, you know, everything that we do is, is based on technique and, and, and obviously um, very specific, um, you know, position. There's details and, you know, technique for each position and based on a, a call or – a route or a blocking scheme. Coach, you added a couple DBs to your roster. Um, how, how difficult it is in, on a short week to kind of get those guys right in there and, and, and learning everything from the game? Well, I mean, we we'll just want to work with some guys. You know what I mean? We're just trying to get some, some legs back there. And uh, we've done it in the past. And then you know, our, our Anthony Midget and Coach Booker have done a good job of that in the past of getting guys ready. And we'll see where they're at and, and see how they can help us, whether that's this week or, or down the road. Big challenges like it just face the Raiders on Sunday. Well, offensively, just tremendous skill. Um, Adams and, and Waller, Renfro, Jacobs, and you know, um, Carr Car makes it all work. Uh, his communication, his operation at the line of scrimmage, they've been doing a lot of good things out of empty, um, which he's you know the leader of that band. And um, defensively, they just. Long, long on the edges, you know, got a lot of great respect for, for Chandler and Max, um, the impact that they have on the game, you know, big up front, athletic inside, you know, young DBs that, that can all run. So you know, they got the, probably the best collection of specialists uh, in the league. Their kickers are fantastic. You know, not only is, you know, Mac Collins, um, you know, producing when they, when they throw to him, when everybody else is doubled, uh, he's, their, he's their best special teams player. <clears throat> Three fifths of your eligibles aren't maybe pass catchers primarily, or known for pass catching. Are, are you looking for those three to help make things happen for the other two? A lot. Uh, curious why you don't load up maybe with more guys who are more dangerous. Well, I think there's sometimes that there's um, you know matchups, whether it's you know base defense or, or nickel, or you're getting a specific call uh, for personnel. Um, had Traylon, had, had Traylon, um, you know, running free uh, in, in one of the particular instances that you're talking about. So I kind of really liked that one. We just weren't able to hit him. And it, that you'd have been on the, it had been on the safety at about 15 yards. So sometimes they work, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but there's, you know, there's other things that go into it as far as maybe what defense you're trying to see, trying to get based on the personnel that you have on the field. Um, when you go and you have to start replacing guys, whether it's on the offensive line or in the secondary like you've had to, obviously you want those guys to be ready to go and experience. But do you sometimes have to simplify things a little bit in order to, to <clears throat> accommodate them as they're coming in? Um, I think it's all on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll um, figure out who, who we're going to try to use for the game, the 48 guys, try to have an idea and try to make sure that they're prepared and then evaluate what we feel good about as far as um, the execution and their understanding of it. How much benefit was there to getting Malik some game action the other night, even in the situation it was, you think? Um, you, you know, I think just, you know, being able to be ready, you know, this week is probably the most important thing. Um, you know, if, if, if anybody that's not a starter uh, has to go in, they're expected to, to prepare like one. So that, that's where our focus is now. Um, you know, we're, we've got a huge challenge ahead, and uh, and it's it's time to prepare to win. What have you done so 
well on the opening drive each of the last two weeks, and what have you not been able to carry over later in the game? Uh, just probably just sustaining, you know, just a, a play here, a play there, a pedal penalty. You know, we talked about, you know, the things that lead to scoring drives. You know, you have to you have to make some conversions along the way. You're going to have to hit a, some X plays along the way. Um, you're going to have to avoid critical errors or penalties along the way. And so, um, if you look at a lot of these drives in the NFL, they they usually have, you know. The, the, the ones that lead to points usually have some X plays and, you know, two or three third down conversions, maybe a fourth and one along the way. And then some of the drives that get stopped, um, albeit without a turnover, obviously, but there's some critical errors that you don't block somebody, leads to a negative play, um, or, or there's a penalty that, that puts it at second and 20. So I think we're, you know, spent some time this morning focusing on those exact things that that we just talked about and trying to show our players what it looks like when we do some of those things offensively, uh, how, how those drives can lead to points. I'm assuming those first two drives were relatively to the script you had before. Sure, close. And you know what I mean? We just weren't able defensively to get some of those stops on third and long. It had been pretty good. We came back, got a stop the other time. So we'll need all those this week. Uh, offensively, yes, I, you know, I would agree with you. And then you know, there's always reasons why, why the other drives aren't as successful. Dennis the plan when he's not well, there. Dennis was the plan uh, Monday night. You know, we'll see where it is. Uh, Sunday, we'll, we'll continue to evaluate Taylor. Are the Raiders using Devontae Adams pretty much the same way Green Bay did, or are they doing anything differently with him? He just gets open a lot. Whether there's two guys on him, uh, he's always open when it's single coverage. Um, intermediate route runner, uh, vertical threat. He's got great release. Plays with different speeds, got great play strength. Um, you know, he's fun, it's fun to watch when you're not preparing for him. I know it's not your defense to, to have a corner follow a guy like that around. Why it, don't you? Who, who, who would you want? I mean, pick, I mean, well, Fulton, is there like Fulton, a. If, if Fulton, if he's healthy, you know, it is, seems uh, like. Champ Bailey available this week, or you know, I mean, we'll we'll figure out whatever we think is best this week, Paul. Okay, I mean, you're 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 done interrupting me. I was trying to answer the question. You saw the best, probably of the Chandler Jones has to offer last year. Well, I hope, but we'll see. (laughs) What like what what does he add to that defense? Just um, great length, savvy. You really appreciate his instincts. Um, You know. Sometimes he goes in, he dips back out, he's slippery, he's long, he does a great job of bending at the top of the pocket. Um, you know, he doesn't just run by the quarterback, he counters back, he, he tries to get his hand up. So he's a, you know, a complete edge player and, you know, very similar to, to Max on the other side. It's just, um, it, you know, it's a huge challenge that they, can, they disrupt the game. Um, and uh, it, it is just be important that we obviously are – our sound on them. If you you know drop your head, they make you miss. How much more aggressive can your front be, knowing that Carr maybe isn't at the runner, say that Josh Allen is? Oh, still athletic. I think we have to you know be mindful that he has the ability to run. I think he, you know, does does look to throw and has stayed in the pocket and has had some you know plenty of success there. Um, so you know we'll have to find ways to affect him. Um, you know when we rush him and you know be smart down in the red zone. Um, you know, so that he's not able to, to get in into the middle of the defense and, and break it down in coverage and, and dump it to somebody. We have first got here, Jayon Brown. I know he was a guy you took personal interest in. What have you seen from him in the couple games that you've? Yeah, it looks like on? he's looks like he's um, you know healthy and um, active, athletic, and you know covering the backs and um, you know see him running around. So um, happy for Jayon. I always liked coaching him, and you know, no different than. Daquan or Roger or any of these guys that have left that you know you build a relationship with and they go on and um, you know they have a career at, a, at another team. It's it's all part of it. Coach, well, I know you talked a little bit about Todd Phillips yesterday, but anything this week that will let you guys decide if he's going to be back there returning punts or is that a decision you guys have made up? Uh, I mean, that's a decision that'll go throughout the week. We'll just see how comfortable everybody is, and um, you know we'll we'll make sure that whoever's back there is. He's got our confidence and is prepared. I apologize for interrupting.
that's okay, Paul. I knew you did. About, about that answer, if you talk well, about I just through. you know when you when you talk about matching up, you know we've we've talked about doing that. We've done that you know in the past, and some teams do it. Um, I, I think a lot of it is is, is preference, the, the motioning, the you know where they move them around to, and getting other you know pieces and parts. Um, you know if you're going to play uh, man coverage. You know that may or may not be the, the you know that's that's the easiest way you could you could do that and, and see it, how that goes every time. But or or you're just trying to mix in different coverages where you know that person may or may not fit into a certain area. And when they you know they motion, you know whether it's two by two or three by one, um, everybody else's job you know has to change. And so sometimes it's probably not as um, easy, you know, but. You know, anytime you're playing, man, you could, you know, you could do that if you felt good about, you know, what you were doing.